This time we're joined by the representatives from the UTA Mavericks, head coach Chris Ogden, as well as number zero, Brian Warren, number five, Edric Dennis. Coach, if you could please start with a brief opening statement. You know, thought our guys were ready to play, opened up, uh, opened up the game, uh, really aggressive and, 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 and playing. I, I knew our guys were locked in. Um, you know, we just we just uh, we just didn't get it done offensively. We didn't make the shots and the plays we needed to. Uh, we fought, we fought. I'm really proud of my guys. Uh, I really appreciate them. Uh, in my first year as being a head coach, uh, the effort that they've that they've given us, the buy-in that they've that they've given us, and I'm really proud. I'm, I, I hurt for them. Um, I've been here, and, and we'll be we'll be back. Um, but uh, but I hurt for them because I wanted it for them and and I told them that um, anytime you put as much into it as they have it should hurt and uh, but I'm really really proud of our of our players. Thank you, Coach. We'll go to questions for the student athletes first. Please wait for the microphone. Raise your hand and we'll bring a microphone to you. Identify yourself by name and media outlet. Questions for the student athletes. We're gonna start up here on the right. She's going to hand it to you from behind you. Chris Amaya from the Shorthorn. Um, Kip, uh, you guys came out hot in the first half, and the team kind of sputtered in the second. What happened? Um, I mean, we just didn't make the shots. I mean, we played well enough defense. I mean, they made it, uh, a great run after, after we had made a run, and then we just couldn't sustain it. So looking at this team, you're coming back as one of the more experienced guys next season. What do you think your role is going to be coming into the next one? Um, kind of the same as uh, this year, just I'll be more vocal next year. Same question for you, Ed. You're coming in as one of the more experienced guys now. What are you going to do for this team next season? Uh, <clears throat> similar to this year, um, a leader. Uh, I'm already vocal, but uh, some areas I can get better in. You know, uh, just leading by example, you know. Uh, and uh, this year, a lot of times, you know, I let my body language uh, hold me back. And, you know, some of my teammates feed off that. And that's one of the biggest things I need to work on, especially being a leader. So, yeah, just being a leader and a locker room guy. We're going to go to the left side now, all the way over. This could be for both of you. Uh, I know it's tough, but uh, coming into the coming into the second half, how did y'all feel going into that that halftime? Uh, you were only down five. Things were starting to get a little dicey, but yet you were down five, and you f could probably play a better game. How did y'all feel going into half? Um, we felt good. You know, uh, anytime you're in a championship game and you, you're right there, it was a two possession game. You know, you feel good. You feel confident. You know. Uh, I mean, you're going to go through trials and tribulations. I mean, not only in basketball, that's life. I mean, we'll learn from it, we'll grow from it, and we'll wake up tomorrow and the, the sun will still be shining. So, Brian, any thoughts on going into halftime? No. Additional questions? Okay, thank you very much, guys. You can head back to the locker room. We'll go ahead with questions for Coach Ogden at this time. Once again, please wait for the microphone. Questions, we're going to start on the right side, third row back. Andrew Zimmel, University Star. Coach, what differences did you see in the second half uh, for Georgia State defensively? Not really any differences. They're, they're good. Uh, they're really good. They've, they, they, um, they recruit to their zone. They got big guards, and they affected our shooting. Um, you know, we had a couple plays there. Um, to, to, to make it a, a one possession game to really tighten it. And they made a couple of plays, a couple of blocks. And, um, uh, the biggest, I think, I thought the difference in the game was the shots they blocked of ours. Continue if you have another. Sorry, uh, what, what adjustments moving forward? Because you can't do anything now, but moving forward in a similar situation, because you mentioned that you plan to be here again next year. How do you adjust to that shot blocking? Recruit. 
guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, we'll look at the tape. I, I don't. They're they're a good team. They were picked number one for a reason. They had the pre preseason player of the year. Ron Ron knows what he's doing. Obviously, I just think he's been to three tournaments in the last four or five years, and uh, they're good. They're very good. So uh, we've got to figure out a way to to beat them to win it. Uh, we know that that'll be something that. Uh, we do we do as a staff and we'll uh, we'll continue to to work at it and you know adjustment wise i don't know but recruiting we're going to go to the back left hey there coach uh, Brett Martel with AP um, if i counted right i wonder if you ever experienced anything like this it looked like your team missed about 23 straight field goals from 10 minutes left in the first half to 14, 46 left in the second. Is that uh, it seemed is that highly out of character for you guys? You That'll get you beat. <laughs> I mean, I, I no, I didn't know that, but uh, yeah, I knew I knew we were going through droughts and we were trying different things, and uh, you know, we had we had we had some looks that we didn't hit, um, but when they when they made the plays at the rim, um, I just thought it affected our overall aggression and. And uh, they did a good job of contesting shots. They did. Uh, so give them credit. I can go straight to that from left. Coach, can you just talk a little bit about what this team specifically has meant to you, uh, being your first team as a head coach and the fight they've shown all season long? Well, I'll forever be indebted to these guys for that reason. I told them in the locker room, I really appreciate them letting us coach them. Because we coach hard. We coach guys hard. and. And uh, we hold them accountable, and and uh, so I appreciate them allowing us to do that, and um, you know, so I'll forever be indebted, and and uh, uh, I like these guys. I mean, you you've seen the fight all year, for us to be picked where we were picked, and do what we did, and have the uh, non-conference that we had, but stay positive and get better, and get to this point where, I mean, look, it was a four four. Uh, Four minute game, and it was a two or three possession game. So we had a chance, um, but, I, but I'm proud of these guys. Slide up to the front right. Coach, so we've talked a lot about how the team was picked to finish 11th. You guys made it to the championship game. Would you consider your first season a success? No. I want to win, man. I want to I win the championship. So that will always be our standard. Um, there were there were some successful things we've done. There were some foundations we built in the program, but our expectation will never change. We want to win championships and we want to play in the dance. So looking at this team, you had guys like Kip and Andres who transferred in. It's a pretty young team. They're coming back next season. What do you expect from them? Well, we got to get better. Everybody's got to get better as individuals. Uh, we got to continue to to uh, to establish our culture, which which for the most part is established. Um, but but these guys have got to want to get better individuals. As individuals, we got to get better as coaches. We've got to get our uh, our new players in here and get them acclimated. And you know, just like anything, we we have to we have to get better as Georgia State is going to do. So it's a never it's a never ending uh, process. Thank you very much, Coach.
Representatives from the Sun Belt champion Georgia State Panthers. We've had Coach Ron Hunter. Well, first of all, I want to keep saying this, man. God is good. For us to get to uh, three out of five years to get to uh, the NCAA tournament, man, is really hard for a mid-major. And uh, back to back is even harder because, you know, we don't get at large bursts. And so you know, no matter how great your year is, you got to win these type of games. So I am so proud of my young men and what they were able to do. I'm proud of the Georgia State community. Happy for the city of Atlanta. Uh, we've got another team that's going to get to the NCAA tournament, somebody for them to cheer for. And um, I'm just really proud. I love that uh, we had what I call a medium celebration. We're excited to get there because you don't want to take these things for granted. So it won't be like this is our first time being able to play. So we'll be ready to play next week. So. Um, Everything should really be generated for these two guys because they were absolutely awesome today. We'll go to questions for the student athletes first. We have number 12, Kane Williams, who was selected to the all tournament team. Number two, Malik Ben Levy, who is the most outstanding player of the tournament. Please wait for the microphone. Any questions, we're ready. We'll start on the right side. Malik, can you kind of tell us a little bit about what you're feeling right now to be, you know, the, <laughs> the most outstanding player? Oh, um, I mean, it feels good, man. No, I don't. Four years I've been playing in the Sun Belt and never made all conference. Feel like I've been snubbed two years in a row. I mean, that's why I never played hard. I was able to win my most outstanding player award. So I mean, I'm feeling good. Brandon Adam, Atlanta Journal Constitution. Uh, for Kane, how big in retrospect do you think your four point play was? Uh, it was very big. I think it was a momentum swinger and. Uh, after that, I feel like we got the tide rolling. And everybody picked up the pace, and we started getting the energy flowing, and the bench started going. Everybody picked up after that, so I think it was a big time play. The right side again. Either one of you guys. We talked a little bit about yesterday how individual awards don't mean anything for this team, but you guys now have three players on either the all tournament team or the most improved player or most outstanding player. What does that mean for the team? <coughs> We don't care about that. <laughs> we want to win championships. That's what we do. We win championships. We don't care about our individual awards, like you said. Man, we just happy to go back to the tournament. Yeah, we weren't too concerned about the awards. We just wanted to win. Everybody was locked in, so that's what we came and did. We're going to take the big trophy over the small trophy any day. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Either one of you guys, again, what you guys do defensively to hold Warren down? He goes four for 18 defensively. Did you guys game plan for him differently, or did he just fit in the zone? Well, he's, he's a smaller defender, so I mean, smaller player, so we just made sure we kept hands in his face and uh, we didn't let him get any space. Made sure we were all up on him and uh, made sure we, he couldn't go to his left hand for the most part. He got, he got a few shots going left, but we tried to contain him, make, it, make him go right, and contest every shot he took. He was kind of talking some, some trash last night, talking about he wasn't going to lose to us three times in a row. Well, we see how that turned out. <laughs> We're going to go all the way to the left side now, in the back. Curious about uh, two things, if you will. Um, one is, uh, and this is Brett Martell with Associated Press, um, one is your defense during about a 15-minute stretch off the clock where they missed 23 field goals in a row, only scored from the line. Um, and then after that, just how this team is different from last year's that made it. I'm thinking specifically of, you know, you had, you know, one leading scorer with 27 in last year's final. This year you have all five starters in double figures. And the guy who led the team last year has 10 points, the least out of the starting five. Shows maybe more balance. Um, I mean, he, he made a sacrifice at halftime. He said he wasn't, he wasn't going, so he said everybody has to step up. And we knew we had to step up, so everybody was playing hard. Everybody did their part, and we played our role. Man, we got it. We we know we all know we got a great team. We know everybody can score. Like the Marcus, the Marcus struggling right now. So he he came to us at halftime. Like, look, man, I'm not making no shots. I'm gonna get y'all open. Y'all just be ready to knock down the shots. And do either of you have thoughts on the 23 missed shots in a row? We we're locked now. We locked in, and we made sure nothing nobody was scoring on us. We said it in practice. We said it all week. Nobody's gonna score on us, and that's what we did. We're the best defensive team in the conference, and we proved that. Additional questions for the student athletes? Thank you very much, guys. You can head back to the locker room. Congratulations. Great job. We'll go ahead with questions for Coach Hunter now. We'll start on the right. 
feel like I'm just a microphone hog. <laughs> Coach, UTA is able to score 34 points off the bench on you guys. What was the bench doing for UTA? Yeah, we don't. I don't get concerned about the bench in that regard. It's you know, it's about who's on the floor at that particular time. Uh, again, I thought our defense was really good. Somebody had to score. We we wanted to make sure that we were that Warren wasn't going to beat us. I thought he had a great game in the semifinals, and he was not going to beat us. And so we really you know locked in on that. I thought Damon Wilson was unbelievable at the at the top of our matchup. And uh, and then you know then he, you know he gets beat. Then you got Kane. And if he if he don't see Kane, then he's got Malik. So up the middle of our of our defense was incredible. You mean? I'm sorry. You mentioned yesterday that your team likes to have the first punch, the middle punch, and the last punch. Yeah. It seemed early that you guys got punched. How did you rebound from that? Yeah, you know, I, I, one of the things that I, I said before the game, uh, this is their first time. And what I mean, first time in the championship, all new players, first time as a head coach. And so they were going to be playing with a lot of emotion. And I told our guys, let's get through the emotion, get through the first period, and let's see what happens. They jumped on us, I think, 7-2. to two. And then once the emotion settled down, and I said, once we get the lead, we won't get it. They, they won't get it back. And that's exactly what happened. Coach, you guys have been in this position before. Um, you you kind of know the routine, what's going to happen in the next 72 hours, mm -hmm. roughly. Is there anything that you've thought about or you're going to be thinking about to do differently, the same, to get yourself prepared and your team prepared for what's going to happen here coming up? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. Um, we, you know, we have been for uh, a, a few times. One of the things I want to make sure is that these kids enjoy it, especially our seniors. You know, I think last year, you know, we were we were – we're in awe just being there because a lot of those guys, only two guys have been to the tournament before. And so this time, I think that uh, we'll, we'll play better. Although we, with four minutes, with five minutes ago, it was a four-point game in Cincinnati, and we just couldn't get over the hump. And I, and I think this year, uh, we are a dangerous team to play. Because of how we play, we are an extremely dangerous team. You don't want to see our name come across there in, in a few hours because these kids are on a mission right now. And we want our whole deal was to get back to the tournament. And one of the, one of the things we, our goal was we want to win a game in the NCAA term. That's what we want to be playing the following weekend. That's one of the things we talked about. This group is really, really hungry. Um, minus DeMarcus, uh, you guys shot 23 to 25 at the free throw line. Yeah. How big is that efficiency in games like this? It's huge. Um, because I tell you, you know, you know, you've seen us throughout the year. I mean, we had missed some shots and we, 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 we weren't the greatest free throw shooting team. And I couldn't understand it because we shoot the ball so well. But we have been great in the end of five, five minutes left in the game. We've been terrific free throw shooters, even when we, when we weren't shooting it well. So I knew when we get inside five, we're, we're, we're pretty locked in at that particular time. And that's when you got to make them. That's what's, that's what's great about this team. And they, their confidence level is unbelievable. Uh, they, they, they play with the chip on their shoulder in, in that regard. Uh, uh, there's no accident that all the guys that we, we face in this tournament that were all conference, we were going to lock them down. We came in here because none of these guys here were all conference, and we talked about that. Absolutely, ever from Texas State to Arlington, anybody on that thing was all, was all conference, they were going to have a fit, and they did. If you look at those guys, they had tough nights for the last two days. It was alluded to earlier that DeMarcus is having kind of a, is struggling. You know, you mentioned that you have such a good team. Everybody is able to get the stars are able to get into double figures. But does this make you nervous moving forward that your leading scorer is struggling? No, absolutely not. Like I said yesterday, what people are doing, they're game planning for DeMarcus, and it's the wrong thing to do. I got good players, and so when you do that, you're leaving Malik open, you're leaving Jeff open, you're leaving Devin open, you're leaving Kane open. I wouldn't do that. And so what happens? Every you know, DeMarcus puts on the floor, everybody runs in, and we kick it out, and we make shots. And so uh, that's one of the reasons why we won a league this year. And so I hope whoever we play in the NCAA tournament, they're doing the exact same thing. We're going to go to the back left. Um, Coach, you, you did allude to it a little bit um, already, but I wondered if you could revisit my two questions. Do you remember them or you want me to repeat them? Repeat it, please. I'm sorry. One was about the 23 straight mm -hmm. misses that you guys forced. Uh, from the field, and the other was just about the like. I mean, you just alluded to the balance, obviously, okay. but uh, is is that is that a market difference from last year? Well, the difference between last year's team and this year's team, we're we're much better defensively, much. I mean, like it's night and day, like two separate teams in that regards. And and, and the key to that is, is Damon Wilson because a, Damon's kind of, he's an elite elite defender, so it makes it. And then the second part is our balance. You know, when when Demarcus got tired in the Cincinnati game, we had no one else to score. And so this time we got enough guys that can go score and who can go shoot it. So uh, we're more prepared as a team to go win a game and go win games in the tournament than we were a year ago. And also on the 23. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, you know, it's funny. That's not the first time we've done that. Uh, we were down 22 to Alabama this year and did the same thing to Alabama. 
I think it was 24, 25. And uh, we were able to win the game, of course, and beat Alabama on the last second shot. So um, this isn't something like this was by accident. We did this earlier in the year when we beat Alabama. Further questions for Coach? Yes, we're going to go to the Um, Coach, I want to talk about the last minute, a uh, minute or so in the game. You took out your players, and I'm just like, whoa, you know, just the confidence, confidence level. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. No, that's, that, that's, that's funny because uh, literally I look, I thought it was 10 seconds to go. And so yeah. it was one-on-one. Yeah. And I'm I losing my like, eyesight a little bit. And I was like, what? <laughs> and so I turned around to my staff, and I said, uh, how many timeouts do we have? <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to embarrass the kids, but uh, we had it. We, we, we were fine. Yeah. But I'll be honest with you. But I, I looked at the further card, and I, it said one-on-one, but I thought it was 10.1 seconds. That's what I was looking like. And I was like, so, really, Coach? Uh, <laughs> then I turned around. I was like, man, it's a long 10 seconds. And, then, and my assistant was like, Coach, what are you doing? So, uh, but it's good. Those get those 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 guys they get a, they get a chance to play. So that's also good. Additional questions? We're gonna go right way to the back now okay. with the camera. Hey guys, I'm Brianna Dawkins with Georgia State University Television. Hey, <laughs> uh, Coach Hunter. Yes. We're not new to this. We're true to this. This is our second chance. Yeah. Going back. How yeah. does this feel? Well, it, you know, I'm I'm happy for the university. You know, Georgia State it seems like you know in our state a lot of times we don't get the recognition that we deserve. People talk about Georgia and, and and Georgia Tech and those things. And I'll say it again: we are the best team in the state of Georgia. We have proved that that billboard that we put downtown has proven why we're the best team in the state. And so, um, you know, now that that's said, I'm done saying that again. But uh, I, I'm just happy for our students. You know, we we got 50,000 students, and you know we, you know, people talk about it. But again, what they won't talk about is our basketball program. We could when when you walk around campus, you hold your head because we you know we've gone three out of five years, we've gone to we 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 won three out of the last six championships in the Sun Belt. So what we've done is we feel like we we brought a pride to that university, and we hope to have a pride for the city. You know because again in the state of Georgia, there's no other team in the state of Georgia going to the NCAA tournament. So we want the whole state to 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 gather around the even the people of Southern Georgia Southern. I know they may not want to do that, but <laughs> you guys can come on that bandwagon and join us and cheer for us also for at least one weekend. Probably not going to happen, but that's okay. But you know what, guys? This has been great. I love it. But uh, I need to get on that bus. This is about to be the best party bus you have ever seen. It's going to take about six hours of unbelievable partying on a bus. We're not going to a restaurant. I, I canceled it. We're not going to the hotel. I canceled it. I'm getting with my team. We're getting with our families. We're getting on the bus. And we are going to You're going to hear us all around the country. The party bus is about to leave in about 20 minutes. God bless you. Go to the state. Thank you very much.